Morning everyone. Just going to give a couple seconds here for Wayne to get our live stream started. Got a pretty good crowd considering we just had the fair. <laughs> What do you want to call it? Diehards? <laughs> Gold star recipients? <laughs> oh, I come up with all these little phrases I tell my kids. I'll say, like, if they do something kind of impressive, I'll say, like, you get a t-shirt and a gold star. Of course, they don't get any of that, really. I just announce it. <laughs> like, good job. I'll get you a t-shirt and a little gold star and a trophy and whatever else. They're like, yeah, right, Dad. Be quiet. <laughs> Beautiful day, huh? We good? Beautiful day. Oh, this is... I like to just, like, take a deep breath... And realize all the things I have to be thankful for. Sometimes we get sort of wrapped up in our own little bubbles, our own little routines, to-do lists, and pretty soon we start thinking about all the challenges in our lives, all the difficulties. And then if you're anything like me, then it get, you get into this little spiral where that's all you're thinking about. And I've been trying to be better. This is why I talk about it to you, because I hope that it'll mean something to you, too. I'm trying to be better about approaching things not from a place of complaining or, or what's negative in my life, but approaching everything from the start from a place of gratitude, from a place of thanksgiving. So I invite us all to do that this morning as we get started. Welcome to Terryville Congregational Church. Those that are here in person and those that are streaming online. One of the blessings of the online, of course, is that you can watch it anytime, not just live. And what I've found over the course of this past year is that a lot of people watch it either later in the day or even later in the week. And that's okay. I mean, it, it stays up. So you can look at it anytime you want and say the prayers with us and sing the songs with us and do all those things, which reminds me, I've been mean, I, some weeks I emailed this out and some weeks I've been forgetting. I, I'm sorry about that, but I'll at least announce it because we've had some folks um, request that I make sure to announce what the songs are when we start because that way they can quickly look them up if they're at home and have the words ready to sing along. So it's going to be... Morning has broken, here I am to worship, what a friend we have in Jesus, softly and tenderly, and I love to tell the story. And those that are here in person have a couple of those songs in your program where you can sing along with us. And some of the other ones that you don't have, if you know them already, you can certainly sing or hum along with us.
Mine is the sunlight, mine is the morning Born of the one light, he didn't stop playing Praise with elation, praise every morning God's recreation So at this time, we'll welcome any morning announcements. I know Jake wants to talk about the fair. He's going to come up to the microphone. While he's making his way up here, I'll just announce, I know we've got prayers for Edna Kirkby, prayers for Wayne Kamens, Prayers for um, Britt Gustafson. That many of you may remember Betty Gustafson. That's her grandson, Brent, and his mother. And I've got some others I gotta think about here. Oh, Ray Berry. And I'll probably think of the others while Jake's talking. Jake Harmbruster, uh, fair chairman, as uh, probably everybody knows already, and also trustee chairman. And uh, I want to just want to thank everyone uh, for a great team effort yesterday. Uh, everything came together. We had a little rain in the morning and stopped, and sun came out, and we had just a beautiful day. We had all our 12 vendors. We would have had more. Uh, sorry to say that Twin Farms didn't make it here uh, yesterday. And, sell their vegetables and flowers. But again, I want to thank everyone for great team effort and it should be very successful. Hopefully we'll have uh, answers on how much we made uh, next week. Thank you. It really was a wonderful fair and we have leftover food in the social hall. So you can either go through there or around. So please, after the service, make your way down to the social hall. We do have some little um, goodies in here too, right inside here for coffee hour. But make your way to the social hall and buy up all that stuff because we got a lot that we'd like you to uh, purchase and take home and eat and enjoy and all those things. Also, um, continue prayers for Rudy as he recovers from his surgery and continue prayers for Tina as she recovers from her surgery. We're talking about the garden? Yeah, I'd just like to uh, give everybody an update on the garden and uh, community garden at the uh, industrial park. It's 100% uh, planted in the, you know, the, uh, Plants are uh, responding, you know, they get, when you transplant, there's a little recovery period, and, and they're just looking great. They enjoy the sunshine, and I would just uh, appreciate your prayers and, and continued support. And uh, just pray for a productive harvest, and it would be able to bless many people in our community. Thank you for your Absolutely. Thank you. And the food pantry did go through a renovation, and if I'm not mistaken, July 19th is the date they're having a grand reopening ceremony. I'm pretty sure it's July 19th. And so people can come and check out the renovation and you know see how much better it's gonna to be to serve our community 
and to serve people in need. I also wanted to remind us, although we are outside, there's a couple of Sundays this summer where we're going to be inside. For example, two weeks from today, we're going to be inside because we have Jerry's little granddaughter is getting baptized, little Sadie. So we're going to be inside for that. And there may be a couple of other ones. I know there's at least one in August where we'll be inside for a baptism. And then the other thing I wanted to point out is while we do have worship at 10 a.m., it's been our tradition, the months of July and August, just those two months, the service is at 9.30. So just keep all that in mind. Just for July and August, 9.30. You'll see the announcements in your bulletin. We're excited um, to get you know, back involved with all of our student activities and we will be live streaming for Vacation Bible School, but the plan is starting in September to be back with our full Sunday school. So that starts September 12th, and then the week after that, September 19th, our confirmation class starts for ninth graders, ninth graders or older. So we're looking forward to all those things. Any other announcements or prayer requests or celebrations? Bob? What was the name again? Marvin O'Leary. Marvin O'Leary. Okay, prayers for the family and friends of Marvin O'Leary. Anybody else this morning? My dad diagnosed For Sam's dad. And all those who are dealing with cancer. Diane? I'd just like to thank Jake. He does so much work for the church there. He's here late at night getting things ready and puts so much effort into all he does for the church. So I'd like to thank Jake for everything he does. Thank you to Jake, absolutely. Not just the fair, but any, any and all things church related. <laughs> Okay, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we all take a deep breath this morning and we take in the beauty of your creation that is all around us. And we say to you, thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. We thank you for the beauty of this day. We thank you for every blessing in our lives. When we pause and when we take those deep breaths, we soon realize that you bless us abundantly. We thank you for family, for friends, for church, for community, for shelter, for clothing, for food, for warmth, for the gift of love. Be with us today as we worship you. Remind us of all of these blessings and also remind us of your call to be people who serve you. To know that life will always have both ups and downs and in the midst of it all, you are present and your grace and your love abide in our lives and carries us so that we are never alone and we never have anything to fear and through both the, the beautiful sunny days and also the stormy days of our lives you hold us, you help us and you encourage us to follow you to deepen our relationship with you, to love you and to love our neighbors. Help us to do this always. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh 
beauty that makes this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say. fair for this morning's word for all ages there was something that really stood out to me yesterday hopefully it stood out to you too and talk about a word for all ages <laughs> what stood out to me is that we really had the span of all ages represented at our fair I was one second I would I was talking to a family that had like a newborn <laughs> And the next second, you know, you're talking to folks in their 90s. And everybody was there together supporting our church. It was so wonderful to see people we haven't seen in a while. You know, of course, this past year has had a ton of challenges. But now that things are sort of starting to open back up a little bit, we did have a lot of people that were able to come out. And to be able to share those conversations and those moments. And I will tell you, in the midst of talking to people of all ages, Almost every single one of them said something very much in, in common. And that was how much they really appreciate our church. And how much their faith means to them. Now we can live our faith, I've talked about this for years now. We can live our faith individually, privately. But it's so much richer, fuller, and deeper lived in community. Lived in a practicing group of people of faith and that's what a church is the church isn't the building the church is the people of faith following Jesus Christ by the way surely we got extra chairs <laughs> and so that really stood out to me all of these different ages all of these different people all coming together yes we raise money which is a wonderful thing to help support our church 
But the, the social fellowship aspect of being together, to me was and is, equally, if maybe not even more important than whatever the dollar amount ends up being. Just being able to be together. Just being able to be together. And to have people say to me, you know, the reason we're here is because this, all of this, all of you, means something to me in my life. And my faith means very deeply something to me in my life so that I want to be together with other believers and I want to do things to support this community of people of faith coming together to follow Jesus. Whether it be uh, talking to a couple different families about having their babies baptized, then the next thing you know, I'm talking to Bernie about the little crosses that he's gonna make, uh, to uh, talking to people in the different booths. And here's the other thing that really stood out to me, and I'm sure it stood out to Jake too, is normally, our different committees sort of handle, it's like this committee handles that booth, this committee handles that booth, and it's sort of automatic, right? This year, it was much more uncertain because we did still, even though things are opening up, we did still have quite a few people that said, you know, we're not quite comfortable yet going into a crowd, which is, it's sort of their, their prerogative. And so we understood that. But what it meant was really having to reach out more and say, okay, we got to make sure all of our booths have have enough coverage, you know, in terms of volunteers. And I don't know how you felt about this, Jake, but I felt like we were more stocked than ever, probably, in terms of making sure that each booth had enough people. In fact, some of them were so full, a couple people came over to me and said, they're full over there. So I'm just going to kind of float and figure out what else I can do to help. The other thing that happened, of course, is we had a person that fell in the back parking lot, but our people swooped in and helped. And I wanted to tell you that they reached out to me and said how thankful they were, especially for you, Pam. That really meant a lot to them. You were right there, especially being a nurse, to be there to help. And um, she's doing fine, well, relatively fine. <laughs> she's home and um, just sort of recovering from, you know, being a little uh, banged up, if you will, but nothing broken or anything. So that was good news. So people coming together to help each other, a variety of ages, beautiful conversations, something that's really been in some ways missed in this past year. And it's such a good feeling to start to get that back, you know, and now the next step, as I said before, is moving into our Sunday school year, uh, moving into our next, our, our incoming uh, confirmation class, which believe it or not, my son is going to be going into high school, which means he's going to be in this coming year's uh, confirmation class. He's that big. He's 175 pounds, and he's 13. <laughs> so I told him, next year, we got to figure out your sports situation, because he needed to be out here yesterday lifting all this stuff, because he's certainly able to. But. He's a uh, Mr. Athlete, or at least he thinks he is, so. I'm very thankful. Uh, hopefully I've expressed this with enough articulation, Jake, to sort of express just how beautiful it was. And I want to encourage us all to do that, not just with our fair, but with everything within the life of our congregation. Certainly, as we move into fall, summertime tends to be kind of light. But as we move into fall, we have a lot of events planned. Uh, September is pretty full, October's pretty full, November's pretty full, certainly December. So I encourage us all to take advantage of all of these things because it's been a while since we've been able to have some of these events that we really, really enjoy. For example, in October, we're gonna do a big benefit concert dinner event and 100% supports veterans local veterans we're, we're doing supporting veteran strong community center which is in bristol but supports our whole area that's just one example of many things like that that we'll be doing and we're just so excited to get back get back into some of these things and to feel a sense of normalcy right nothing's ever 100 percent normal but to get a sense of it is such a blessing let us pray oh god we thank you for all ages, everyone coming together to be your people, your followers. Through fellowship, through social time together, through uh, raising money for our church, 
to be able to better do your will through reaching out to other people, people in need, through Bible study, through worship, through singing, through prayer, through all of these things that we do as people of faith. We thank you. We seek you. And we thank you that we can get back into being the church in its fullest. And as we do that, we ask for your guidance. That we always serve you and that we always glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Chapter 4 talks a lot about planting, a lot about seeds, and what happens within this passage really happens without throughout the entire chapter. So I'm going to ask you to bear with me because I actually want to read the chapter. That way we get the full scene of all of these parables and all these words that Jesus is talking about in terms of planting and seeds and sowing and harvesting.
Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and set it out on the lake while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. He taught them many things in parables in his teaching. And he said, listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he scattered the seed, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow, but when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and grew and produced a crop, some multiplying 30, some 60, some 100 times. Then Jesus said, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. When he was alone, the 12 and the others around him asked him about the parables and he told them, the secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you. But to those on the outside, everything is said in parables, so that they may be ever seeing, but never perceiving, ever hearing, but never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. And Jesus said to them, don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? The farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown. Others are like the seed sown on the rocky places. They hear the word, they receive it with joy, but since they have no root, they only last a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Still others, like seed sown among thorns, they hear the word, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth and the desires of other things come and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Others, like seed sown on good soil, they hear the word, accept it, produce a crop, some 30, some 60, some 100 times what is sown. And he said to them, do you bring a lamp and put it under a bowl or a bed? Instead, don't you put it on the stand? For whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed and whatever is concealed is meant to be brought in the open. Anyone with ears to hear, let them hear. Consider carefully what you hear. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you and even more. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken away. And he said, the kingdom of God is like this. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. And again he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet, when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, with such big branches that birds can perch in its shade. With many similar parables, he spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. That day when evening came, he said to the disciples, let's go over to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him just as he was in the boat. And there were other boats. A furious squall came and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. And Jesus was in the stern sleeping. The disciples woke him up and said, teacher, don't you care if we drown? And he got up and rebuked the wind and said to the waves, quiet, be still. And the wind died down, and it was completely calm. And he said to the disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you. You are our strength. You are our Redeemer. Amen. I still got the jokes from, uh, is this Memorial Day maybe? <laughs> 
Uh, one of my favorite things is being handed a little sheet of paper with jokes on it. But this one came from Memorial Day weekend when we were at the Plymouth Church. And during that service, there wasn't really a time to, to introduce these. So I saved them for today. Here we go. Are you ready for the level of corniness to be heightened in your life? The definition of pasteurize. Too far to see. <laughs> Past your eyes. That one took me a while. I was reading, I was like, I don't get this. Because if you read the way the words, sp anyway, it's past your eyes or past your eyes. Okay. No matter how much you push the envelope, it'll still be stationary. <laughs> The headline reads, <laughs> Energizer Bunny Arrested, Charged with Battery. <laughs> Whoever invented the knock-knock joke should get a Nobel Prize. <laughs> Those are good. I like them all. They're like at 98% corny. <laughs> That's about as close as you can get to that 100% mark. So we just read a, an entire chapter. There's a lot in there. But it was important, I thought, to share it all because you see how there's sort of a cumulative effect of this chapter. Story after story, lesson after lesson, where Jesus is reinforcing this imagery of planting and seeds and the way the seeds fall on the ground and the way it comes up and the way it's harvested. And then you get to the very end, he's already done all this profound teaching and a storm comes and the disciples are immediately terrified. And he's like, wait a second. <laughs> I've just been giving you all of these beautiful blessings and these profound teachings and I've, I've even explained them. <laughs> even though to me, some of them are pretty straightforward, but he still took the time to explain it. And yet, as soon as one little thing happens, you're cowering away, scared, ready, you know, coming over and waking me up like it's, you don't know what to do. It's like he's reminding them, be calm. Have faith. Take heart. <laughs> trust. I've said to us many times, that's my favorite definition of faith, is trust. Not just believing, yeah, I think I'm pretty sure there's a God. Yeah, I think I believe in God. No, I trust that God is involved in my life. That God is, to use theological terms, both transcendent, above and beyond, and imminent at the same time, which is the most powerful thing in the world to be, really. Right within me and all around me, and at the same time, above and beyond and more grand than anything I can imagine. And I trust in that. I trust that it matters. It means something. It carries me in my life. And I encourage all of you to take on that kind of trust. When the storms come, are we so quick to immediately start doubting everything? Take a deep breath and know that God is with you. Jesus talks about all of this planting and these seeds. And it makes you really examine your own life. What kind of soil are you? Which one of those examples he gave represents us? Are we like the rocky soil? Are we like the good soil? Are we the one that, that doesn't last at all? Are we the one that lasts for a little while, but then as soon as something happens, we quickly fall away? Are we the one that have a depth and a richness of, of soil? so that God remains a constant in our lives and our response to God remains constant. It's so important, I think, to read those examples he's giving and think about where do I place myself in the story? That's what I think is so powerful about his teachings, especially his parables. You can place yourself in it. And maybe you're at one place, but maybe you want to get to a different place. And so through prayer and through living the life of faith, you can. we can all work on that. I mean, none of us are perfect, so maybe in that sense, none of us are the good soil. But we want to be striving toward that good soil. We want God's Word to dwell in us, and then we want to go out and give that to others. As Jesus says, don't hide it under a bowl 
or put it under your bed. He's calling us to bear fruit, to live outwardly our lives of faith. Not to just think about it on the inside, but to live it. The mustard seed has always stood with me. I remember learning this passage even from as an age of a young child. And I always thought it was so amazing that God could take something so small and say, you know what, that's enough. Because Jesus also talks about a mustard seed faith. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. Well, I don't know if you've ever seen one, but a mustard seed is even smaller than like your pinky uh, fingernail. It's like uh, maybe a, hold on a second, one, two, three. <laughs> it's like a twelfth. I think it's like a twelfth of the size of my pinky fingernails. Tiny. It's like a little bit bigger than a grain of salt. I mean, it is tiny. And for God to say, that is enough. With that, you can move mountains. With that, the word can be planted and this beautiful mustard seed plant can come up enough to give shade to the birds. Now, I was curious, because I don't know a lot about plants. <laughs> People say to me, is that poison ivy? I'm like, I don't know. To me, everything looks like a three-flower plant. <laughs> People are like, well, you should know it's a three-flower plant. They all look like that to me. I don't know. I just It's never been my thing. Um, so I just try to stay away from it all or make sure I got gloves on, which I did and I still got it. Anyway, long story. Um, my point is, <laughs> I didn't know what a mustard seed plant looked like, so I Googled it. It kind of looks like a... Um, sort of a mixture between a tree and a bush. It's like a big sort of sprawling, to me it kind of looks a little bit more like a bush, but it does have the branches. So, you know, te I, technically I guess, I mean here he calls it a plant. Um, it's kind of like an in-between. What's amazing about that is this is the way God works. God could have said, I'm gonna be the kingdom of God and it's going to be as big as this tree that's right here in our yard here. It's going to be huge. It's going to be overpowering. It's amazing. It's kind of like when Jesus rides in to Jerusalem. He doesn't come on some grand stallion with rich, you know, million dollar clothing and million dollar jewelry. He comes in on a little donkey, a little colt. He doesn't have the biggest entourage, the biggest group of people with him that are all these amazing. He's got a little entourage. He's got his little colt. He's got his simple clothing. God is powerful, but God doesn't have to say, I'm going to be the most arrogant. I'm going to have the biggest and the best of everything. It's kind of like that with this mustard seed plant. It's big enough that birds can find shelter in it, but it does. God says, I don't need to be this big, huge, sort of arrogant, overpowering image. I want you to understand the image of a mustard plant. It starts from something very tiny and then becomes big enough that it will give you everything you need. It'll provide shade, birds can rest in it, and that is how my kingdom is. From something very tiny, amazing things come to life. And so now, now that I've actually looked at this image, I'm, I'm never gonna forget that. I'm gonna put the two together. That the mustard seed's smaller than my little pinky fingernail, and then the thing that comes out of it is big, it's not the biggest thing that exists, but it's big enough to hold us, to carry us, to help us, to be beautiful the way that God is. When Jesus has the Last Supper, he doesn't have a million dollar, billion dollar, trillion dollar, beautiful jewel, you know, uh, chalice. He has a very simple meal with his followers and a simple chalice. And from that comes everlasting life, eternal life. To me, there's something very powerful about our faith that God works in this way. God wants us to understand that level of humility while also that level of power. How will we respond? What kind of soil are we? What kind of soil are we trying, striving to become? How will we take those lamps out from under the bed, out from under the bowl, 
and proclaim God in our daily lives. This summer, I invite you to live your life of faith. Don't be afraid when a little storm comes and go and try to wake up Jesus. Help, 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 help. Jesus can do all things at any time. He wants us to trust. To live the life of faith boldly with that trust and with a simplicity and a humility. One of the things I was reminded of yesterday, I'll close with this. Our, our young people, our children, our students, they approach things with such a beautiful, sort of straightforward, simple, honest, they just put themselves there. Hey, I'm here. This is what I think, this is what I do, I'm here. I love God, I love my family. And I think that's what God wants of all of us, to come to God like that, with that simple, humble, childlike trust, and to just come to God. So I invite us to do that this summer and always. Praise be to God. Amen.
us pray. O oh God, again we praise you for the beauty of your creation, the sunshine, the warmth, the ability to be together. And we praise you for yesterday's fair, for the fellowship, for the conversations, for the ability to be together as people of faith. Help us this summer to shine your light, not to hide it, but to shine it. And we ask that you be with everyone that we've been thinking about this morning, Sam's dad, family and friends of Marvin O'Leary, be with Tina, be with Rudy, be with Ray, be with Brent and his mother, be with Wayne, be with Edna, be with others who are on our hearts that we bring to you now in a time of silence. Oh God, we have people on our hearts and minds that are here local and situations that are here local and we have things that are weighing on us that are happening beyond our local community. We bring it all to you in prayer. We ask that you be with all of our graduates and all of the students as they close out their school year and as they head into their summer routines. We ask that you be with all the families as they make their summer plans and everybody traveling to be safe and healthy. Be with those who have a scheduled procedure coming up or surgery. Be with those who are grieving. Be with those who are hurting financially. And help us all to be there for all of these people as well to love you and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Let us all now pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And as always, when we bring, when we have our closing song, you're invited to bring the offering up. But I just want to remind you all, the road to get here <laughs> can be a little bumpy. <laughs> the ground, the grass, and everything has like, you know, like grass does, little divots and little mounds. And so just to be very careful, your second option is always to bring it up afterward. <laughs> The other thing we could do is bring it to the flat area. Thank you, Rich. <laughs> that certainly will help. And before we have our song, we'll say our prayer for the offering. Let us pray. Oh God, again, we praise you. We seek your will for our lives. We ask your blessing on these offerings today. Multiply them and use them to glorify you, to serve you, and that they always be according to your will. We ask that you bless our congregation here and help us to use the funds to be better servants for you. Bless all of our lives as well, O oh God. Each and every one of us is going through something different in our lives. Some of us may be in a difficult time. Some of us may be in a joyous time. And some of us may have a little bit of both. Be with us and help us. Help us every day to live our lives as an offering to you. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to come up with a new hymn. Don't blow away, dear music. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I love to tell love. 
story of hunting things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know it is true. of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you today and always. Amen.